I look at it in, uh, in two dimensions. Um, we supply energy products and metals across the suite. Um, over time, the world, so we fulfill a demand. Over time, the world will always migrate to those things that are better, lower impact, more recyclable, etc., etc. The second dimension is always be above reproach in that given product, in gas or in energy coal or in oil extraction. We have to be the company that does it best, best environmental responsibility and so on. So I tend to think about it in those two dimensions. And I think the way that I look at the community impact, it's in the form of three concentric circles. In the, um, in the smaller circle, you've got a CSR, or let's call it something with a philanthropic bent. Um, about $200 million a year. Since we became part of the 1% Club, uh, $1.1 billion donated in this way. But that's the smaller circle. The slightly bigger circle, and probably the one that we're going to talk about more today, is the approximately $10 billion of re uh, royalties and taxes that we pay in local communities, and the approximately $25 to $30 billion of inputs that we buy every year. So that's the middle circle. But the bigger circle is probably, if you look at the, um, the logo, it says they're resourcing the future. And probably the thing that most of our employees will identify with is if you talk about Millennium Development Goals, the area that has done most or has lifted most people out of, the, uh, out of poverty has been Asia. And uh, we, uh, our, our tagline says resourcing the future. And um, I guess most of our employees would identify with in a world that is industrializing and urbanizing, we basically supply all of the things that, that create that, that world. So steel, copper, uh, all of the things that go in buildings, infrastructure, communications, almost every raw material, and then the energy on top of that to power that. So that's, that's those three concentric circles uh, in successively larger form is, is what I think where we see our impact. But the one thing that links all of these operations together is that we always operate in somebody's backyard with something that can be quite intrusive. And therefore, um, you know, linking into the community is, a, is, a, is an overriding objective. Each, each community has got, got different um, uh, attributes. We've, we've linked with the World Health Organization in southern Mozambique to very dramatically um, reduce malaria uh, using inter, uh, inter alia these um, these impregnated mosquito nets. Uh, what we find is that most value is added to the community where there is a cluster of activity um, based around what we do that progressively, m much like the layers of a shell, continues to build out um, the, the, the community. And I think that's probably wh where you know, very many different service providers from health, um, you know, technology, uh, telephone and so on gradually layer on. We talk about socially conscious uh, investors and ethical funds and so on and so on. But we probably as a world only at the start of that if we're completely honest with ourselves. We've not yet reached a point in the stock market where there is a genuine differentiation between those that do well and those that don't. The, the broader uh, driving of you know, value of company, share price and so on by how they do things, I think we're still you know, quite frankly some way off. Because our employees know that they've got to shape the project properly, they've got to add value to the community, they do that in a way that is cognizant of the long-term value. I, I don't see yet a sustainable value outperformance in the stock market as a result of how we do things. But I, th if, I think if we purely look at a, um, at a community contribution, uh, I think that we just at the beginning stages where the, the questions get asked, how much do your communities benefit? Are they still going to like you in 10 years time? Is that going to create extra value for you over time as your communities work with you in a better way? 
than, uh, than other companies. It's a journey. Yeah. I think the trend is clear, but I think, think in my sector, we shouldn't pretend that that, that that trend is even close to maturity yet. We want to create a, a, create a more profound interlinkage with communities, um, engage those communities more in supplying our businesses, um, make sure that those communities benefit from our presence. Being transparent about this is our minimum standard and it applies for our suppliers and their suppliers and their suppliers' suppliers and so on, extraordinarily uh, important, I think. We seek affirmation in our share price that what we do, that that is right. But um, I, I think we've got to turn that around. Um, we, we need affirmation by our communities that what we're doing is the right thing. We need affirmation by our employees in their turnover rates that they're proud of working for us. So I, I think we've just got to shift our point of view here. You spoke about the three circles. Think about the second circle. Every input you buy can be a tool. And then to what we've heard here from the other, uh, from the other guys here on the outer circle, every cent of revenue is a potential tool as well. So I think we've just got to broaden our, our perspectives a little bit.